in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed I'd like you to just lift your hands as a family of faith. I'd like us to thank the Lord for his faithfulness. Thank him for the miracles. Thank him for the signs, the wonders. Thank him for the manifestations of his hand in our midst. Please bless him. World over, Azaria family following, give him praise. We choose to say thank you. We choose to say you have done all things well. You have done me well. You have done me well. You have done me well, Jesus. You have done me well. You have done me well. You have done me well, Jesus. Sing it from your heart to him. You have done me you have done me well. You have done me well, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You have done me well. You have done me well. You have done me. Father, we see your mighty hand in our midst, week in, week out. Our lives are full of testimonies of your goodness, healings, deliverances, liftings. These are the Lord's doing, and we have come to say thank you. We are not ungrateful. We return like the one leper to say thank you, Jesus. We're not confused as to who is the doer, the mighty things that you do in our midst. Men may focus their attention on us, but we redirect them to Jesus, the doer, the worker of wonders. Thank you, Father. Forever we declare that this place remains a house that projects Jesus. It is true that we are the vessels that you use, but beyond us may men see you. In the name of Jesus Christ, beyond us may men see your power. Your grace has found me just as I am. Empty handed but alive in your hands Your majesty Majesty Forever I am changed by your love In the presence of your majesty 
forever I am changed by your love. There are five things that will always happen for as long as we live serving the purposes of God in and through this platform. Number one, every time we gather, there must be encounters. An encounter is an experience that makes God and his principles real in your life. Encounters. Number two, there must be transformation. The name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience. Number three, we must give the Holy Spirit an opportunity to reveal the love and the power of Jesus through signs, wonders, and miracles. Let me tell you, I believe in miracles. I really believe in miracles. Number four, there must be impartations of all sorts. An impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. Men can carry graces. And our possibilities in this kingdom are defined by the kinds and the levels of graces that we carry. Thou anointest my head with oil and I see the proof of what is on my head by looking at my cup. It doesn't anoint my cup. If something is wrong with my cup, the problem is not the cup. The problem is what is on my head. And then finally, we must always provide an opportunity for fellowship. How good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that comes upon the head of Aaron down to his bed, his garment. He says, there the Lord hath commanded the blessing. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Just a few minutes and we'll be seated. But while i sat back there i think it was david who was ministering i the lord was showing me a vision and in that vision i saw someone with what looks like um a cleaner you know when you write on a board and you're cleaning that's what i saw happening just cleaning and the scripture that came to me is blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us and I'm just going to raise one song. We'll be seated shortly, but I want you to bring all those under the anointing. There are families. This is not just individuals. Individuals may be under the anointing, but this is a ministration for families. There are handwritings that have followed people for many years. You may not even know. Handwritings that authorize favor to leave you. Handwritings that authorize good things to leave you. Healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is falling down. I'm not afraid. Healing rain is falling down. Healing rain. One more time. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Your healing rain is falling down healing rain is falling down in the main auditorium all the overflows down to the basement and outside our Zaria family following our global family following I stretch my hands and I decree and declare everyone who belongs to this category where there are handwritings please bring them out and ordinances that will not let you go this is koinonia and in the name of jesus the christ of god exalted both as lord and king i declare that those handwritings are blotted out now those handwritings are blotted out now everywhere whoever has been a victim of demonic writings kataparuskiata writings on females writings on males writings on educated ones uneducated ones writings that wait for seasons to be activated in the name of jesus christ i declare right now may those writings be blotted out 
writings against your finances writings against your health writings against your victory writings against your lifting in the name that is above all names this night this night not tomorrow not next week not monday this night open your mouth begin to declare i blot out by the power of the blood every handwriting help them every handwriting Lift your voice and pray. There is power in the name of Jesus. There are miracles in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. It breaks every chain. It removes every chain, yeah. it breaks every chain. Please don't be distracted. You are in church. We are praying. God is settling serious issues here. We came to receive. I'm still praying. God is not done yet. listen to me listen there are families there is a limit on you nobody rises beyond that limit it doesn't matter whether you travel abroad it doesn't matter whether you back a phd it doesn't matter there seems to be a limit right now in the name of jesus at the count of three i want you to shout the name jesus in the main auditorium down to the basement outside following from any nation as you shout that bar that has been set that you will not cross in the name of jesus the son of the living god fire burns that into pieces are you ready now one two three shout jesus upon families upon destinies bring them out every limit placed upon you every embargo placed upon you upon your political career upon your business now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is please bring them out hallelujah please pay attention there are families here that never finish anything you start but it never finishes no matter what whether it's a building project whether it's your spiritual life it does not the finisher's anointing is not there the moment you start something must happen on the way and abort that destiny i stretch my hands in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god if there is any family here that is under the yoke of aborting glorious destinies at the count of three i want you to shout that name again that is above all names as you shout that name that yoke must be broken are you ready now one two three shout jesus that altar that yoke in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus now the Lord is that spirit the Bible says and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty the Bible says the hand of Zerubbabel that began this work that same hand will complete it 
I'm saying it again. Anyone who is in fraternity with dark powers, stopping you from finishing what God said should be finished. Right now in the name of Jesus, may the earth open up and swallow them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please don't be tired though. We are praying. You came here. Listen, one genuine encounter can bring to end decades of waste of time, waste of destiny. This is the house of God. I want to pray a very serious prayer before we sit down. How many of you know that destinies can be exchanged in the spirit? That you can be living a life you know this is not my life i'm living another person's script it's in the bible where kings slew their children so they will live long in the name of jesus i'm praying now anyone under the sound help them please help them help them anyone under the sound of my voice who is living a script that is someone else's destiny programmed by witchcraft programmed by necromancy powers manipulating your destiny at the count of three i declare in the name of jesus there must be deliverance for you are you ready to shout again my god and my king anyone here whose destiny has been manipulated spiritually financially by the power that raised christ from the dead let there be liberty right now one two three shout jesus liberty restoration liberty restoration liberty restoration Hallelujah. Everything that should not have left your life, either by mistake it left, or by manipulations it left your life, and yet it is part of your prophetic preordination. I stand by the voice of prophecy, I call it back to your destiny in the name of jesus i call it back to your destiny opportunities i call them back by prophecy relationships i call them back by prophecy You'll be seated shortly, but I'm praying. Who is Jane? Jane. I'm hearing a name, Jane. Jane. Will be seated shortly. My sister, Victor, shift please. That lady lifting her hands yes tap her for me lift your hands the lord is saying oppression has come to an end over your family take that grace right now i command that spirit to let you go in the name of jesus christ never to return to you i use as a point of contact and i speak to everyone here the days of oppression comes to an end now Who is Jane? I'm hearing a name, Jane. I presume there may be many people. Help them, please. I want to pray for you. The power of God is going to come on one of you. There's a miracle that God is bringing to your family. 
Those who are out here, don't rush to go back to your seat. There's a reason why I ask that they bring you out. I will pray for you. But the Lord is asking me to minister to a Jane. And one of you standing here, the power of God is going to come on you very quickly. And you'll be back. I will pray for everyone. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. The Bible says... it shall be destroyed because of the anointing just help her hold her baby she can have the baby back after the prayer father anyone under the sound of my voice here that has been oppressed whose family has come under a demonic siege ah, i'm seeing like fire resting in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god I declare right now that family I set on fire every covenant every ordinance I set on fire right now I set on fire right now I set on fire in the name of Jesus Christ I set on fire I burn every walk of witchcraft every walk of darkness against these families I release you into your prophetic destiny in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah i just sense in my spirit before i pray for this once and we sit down i was so touched by the testimony of the woman and her her younger brother the woman with the boy who whose genotype was changed there are many people suffering silently under that demonic thing that appears like a medical condition there are double bases upon which the devil oppresses you in the name of jesus we come by the mystery of the blood the blood of the eternal covenant that speaks better things than the blood of abel and we declare these plagues are cancelled forever 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 Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. My head. Please return to your seats rejoicing. Let's give Jesus praise. There's someone just help them will be seated shortly but i'm seeing someone you came here with um your credentials in a brown file bring it come with it Jesus, the Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Jesus. The Lord is setting that gentleman free. Age-long captivity over his family. Stopping people from getting jobs and making progress. But who shall say a thing and it shall come to pass when the Lord has not declared it. Their, their deliverance is happening. Many people you see who are suffering, it's not that they are bad people. There are spirits that are standing the way of people. My sister, this lady, in the name of Jesus, be delivered. The one you are holding, I stretch my hands for you and for your family. The time has come for your liberty in the name of Jesus Christ. Miracles don't just happen. No. There is a gift called the walking of miracles. Look what is happening to them. Ladies and gentlemen, these are people who were minding their business sitting and wondering why doors were not opening
What's her name? That lady. My dear, I want to pray for you. You believe in miracles? Help them also they don't fall down. Just help them there. There will be such an avalanche of jobs. You believe what I'm telling you. Not just for those who are out here. Not just for those who are out here. I'm speaking by the Spirit of God. I fear God and I will not tell you what God has not said. There will be, you will see people come to stand here. Miracles after miracles. The gospel affects the well-being of people. Not just their spiritual destiny. The gospel, the true gospel affects the well-being of people. I prophesy as I've been commanded and I declare by the Spirit of God the grace for increase on that wise. Let it come upon you. Supernatural jobs by the power of the Holy Ghost. Supernatural jobs for the glory of the name of the Lord for the advancement of the gospel. In the name of Jesus Christ. It says where you have been deserted so that no man would pass through you you will become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations for those of you who have come out here because there was a specific word for you in the name of Jesus I don't care whether it's a fresh job or it's promotion in the name of Jesus I place grace on you go back with this grace and let it work wonders on your life my friend, what do you do? Huh? You are a project engineer with a telecom company. I want to pray for you. Because what your own is not just a job. There is a very serious increase that God is bringing. Look at me. My friend, look at me. Just look at me first before you say amen. Understand what I'm saying. This is not just for you, but God wants to use you as a savior for your family. You believe that? You see, in this kingdom, when it comes from God, it does not have a component of self-centeredness in it. When he sends a word to Jacob, his intention is Israel. When he sends resources to Jacob, the intention is Israel. When he sends influence to Jacob, it is the character of men to be self-centered once it is me in this kingdom selfishness is sin it's not only bad is sin the character of love the law by which the new believer the new creation in Christ lives by is that it gives so this is already a message for someone receiving just for myself my mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. When he sends a word to Jacob, when he sends a lifting to Jacob, it is because he intends for it to reach Israel. Hallelujah. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear these words. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, through Jesus, the Son, and give Him the glory he My friend, what's your name? This man. Huh? I want to pray for you. Where are you from? Don't be embarrassed. Don't feel bad. I have seen this thing more than 100 times as I minister to people. Every time the Lord opens my eyes and I see this tree and I see written on it A L E K U. You know what that is? Yes. I want to pray for you. That's what I'm seeing again. We are not prophets of doom. We are ministers of life. Once we minister to you, it is not informing you about the trouble. We are bringing you out. The real power of God does not just inform you about what is happening and leaves you there. It delivers you. It brings you out. 
I stretch my hands and I command that influence and that demonic spirit to let you and all who are connected to you go free now. In the name of Jesus Christ. May doors be so open for you that it will, you will marvel and wonder at the goodness of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help him please. In the name of Jesus Christ. I apologize we are taking time. I hope I'm not wasting your time. There is a woman in here. This is about four years at least. You came here and your one prayer is fruit of the womb. Who is that? I'm seeing someone. Come. In this auditorium, not just those outside. I can, I'll pray prophetically. But there is someone here. What's your name? What's your name? What's the name of this one? Huh? Lillian. Lillian, come. Well, I, 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 I'm not sure I heard your names. Come and stand. The person I want to pray for, you are Lillian. Who is Jessica? What's your name? Jessica. You are Lillian. Two of you, are you friends? You came separately. You believe in the power of God? How long have you been married? How long have you been married? This is the fourth year. I want to pray for you. You believe you will stand here with your children? I believe in miracles. The God that does wonders. Please don't cry. Father, I pray for these precious ones. They have stood here trusting, believing. For many of you, you have been prayed for again and again and again. And you're standing here wondering, I'm sure it will be like before. Remember what Peter said, Master, we have toiled all night. He said, but nevertheless, at thy word. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. One of you will shout under the anointing loud in front here. When that happens, I just saw the healing power of God moving to you people. Now, you see, sometimes this is a ministry of signs and wonders. So I take out time to explain these things so that when they happen, you don't think this is a display of some superstition. But the Lord does these things many times so that we will fear him. He also does it to strengthen our faith. Now I'm ready to pray. Look what is happening to them. Lift up your eyes to him. You will arise again. He will come and save you. If you lift up your eyes to him, you will arise again. He will come and save you. They looked unto him and their faces were lightened. I stretch my hands and I declare, according to the time of life, I release an anointing upon all of you right now. I declare, by that grace, in the name of Jesus, like Eli declared unto Anna, according to the time of life, return with your miracle children. According to the time of life, return with your miracle children. And every power that is back of this tragedy, we dislodge it in the name of Jesus Christ. Look and leave, my brother, leave. Look to Jesus Christ and leave. It's recorded in his word. Hallelujah. It's only that you look. The Lord bless you. Please go back to your seats. Return with your testimonies. In the name of Jesus. This is what happens when you come to church. Please be seated. God bless you. Good evening, everyone.
Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever love you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever follow I will seek you in the morning And I have learned to walk in your ways For step by step you lead me And I will follow you Hallelujah Praise the name of the Lord. Tonight, what you are about to learn will change your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 defines in very clear terms the assignment of a true shepherd. Jeremiah chapter 3, please give it to us in verse 15. The assignment of a true shepherd. I will give you pastors according to my heart and if they are according to my heart they have the singular assignment to feed you with knowledge and feed you with understanding that means knowledge and understanding are divine meals when you are served with this meal of knowledge and of understanding there is a predictable outcome you will become something very exact very intentional i will give you pastors after my heart acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the bible says and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers these are the requirements for growth and maturity in the spirit submission to doctrine fellowship breaking of bread prayers so every time we gather i will not fail to let us know that we are here gathered to learn to be mentored to be baptized into an exact body of spiritual truth realize that every time we meet there is a making there is an evolution there is a transition that is happening to us it is not the same version of you who came two weeks ago that is seated now no light is transiting you you will get to a point where you are so full of the light and the power of the holy spirit the results will begin to speak inevitably they will speak hallelujah the Lord put a very powerful teaching in my heart and I'm sent to the body of Christ primarily even though Koinonia as a global family is anointed us to minister his word but most of the teachings that I bring are for the body of Christ regardless denomination regardless your the doctrinal differences that seem to divide us it is part of the reason why he brought us to this city and has projected us to the nations as instruments of unity, balance, dexterity, and growth. Are we together? We are lifted and we are strengthened in this kingdom not based on our longevity in the faith. No. Time does not change anything. Time only reveals. A 10-year-old error can still destroy like a one-year-old error, provided it is error. Are we together? It takes understanding, light. It says, but the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. So tonight I pray in the name of Jesus Christ world over, Azaria family, Abuja family here, and all who are following from their homes, please pay attention. 
if you are distracted when the word of god is coming be sure it is an attack it's an attack because it takes focus and concentration to receive there is an intellectual dimension to the reception of the word it's not just a spiritual affair alone your mind has to be active your mind has to be fruitful so even if your spirit is alive and your mind is distracted you see that that's why sometimes before the message comes god quickly settles issues like this because some of those issues are the things that distract people from listening while the word of god is coming someone is thinking how do i battle this issue how do i battle that issue praise the name of the lord hmm. psalm 34 and verse 9 the mystery of divine intervention i want to show you a very very powerful exodus chapter 3 and verse 8 let's go to exodus chapter 3 and verse 8 exodus chapter 3 and verse 8 the mystery of divine intervention no matter who you are no matter your spiritual level your intellectual level you will get to a point in your life and your destiny listen carefully where there will be a need for a supernatural intervention in your life over the affairs of your destiny remember that what we receive every week here we are handed keys the assignment of keys is not only to open doors but to give you confidence that you cannot be limited the presence of keys suggests that you can no longer be confined and limited you can open the door at will and close the door at will revelations 3 7 and 8 right i'm he that was dead and now is alive and i hold the key of david please go back to verse 7 he of david he that openeth by reason of that key no man can shut and he that shut it and no man can open because of a key that you hold these revelations and these mysteries are keys that grant us grace to command victory the victory of christ and the finished work of christ will remain prophecy and only remain a potential the reality of it is activated on the strength of the light that we know and we understand thoroughly articulated and then empowered by the spirit of god when you receive that revelation the grace for performance also comes with the revelation you see how it works you're not going to receive a grace for a dimension when the understanding of that dimension is not yet fruitful in your life so the anointing of the holy spirit follows revelations the anointing for prosperity follows the revelation of prosperity the anointing for spiritual growth follows the revelation for spiritual growth if you want the anointing you must want the understanding that brings and preserves that anointing are we together exodus 3 and verse 8 let's get to work very quickly and i am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey and unto the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites and Jebusites. I am come down to deliver them. Divine intervention is one of the mysteries that provides a system of advantage to believers now as you know our dominion in this kingdom is based on the lights that we have but also based on the systems of advantage that we access no one is advantaged by default uh -uh. for as long as you are born here on earth doesn't matter if you come from a rich family you may have a financial advantage but that does not necessarily translate into a spiritual advantage are we together now through 
the revelation of God's word, we begin to incorporate into our lives through the understanding of scripture, systems of advantage, favor, mercy, are we together? Speed, relationships, the anointing, understanding, wisdom, so that you now begin to introduce these spiritual forces into your life and your destiny and in no time you will see that your life begins to reflect the image and the character of the christ in reality my little children he said of whom i travail until christ be formed in you he was speaking to believers those who were already saved but he was talking about the formation of christ it's one thing to potentially be a recipient of the life of God but the fullness and the riches of that life is released through understanding Ephesians 4 and verse 18 having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart Psalm 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are God and all of you, not some, are children of the Most High. The next verse says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. Bankruptcy of spiritual knowledge can, even though you are saved, you may never be able to walk in the fullness of those potentials. An heir, the Bible says, as long as he's a child, he differeth not from a slave. Even though he's an heir, but provided he's a child, void of understanding, void of spiritual intelligence, he differeth not from a slave. Even though he be lord of all, he's under tutors and governors. So it takes light. Isaiah 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Amplified says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Are we blessed? I'm saying all this so that the Lord will, by this teaching, alongside others, plant in us a hunger for exact spiritual growth this shadow boxing of trying principles here and there when we are confronted with issues most the average believer please look up listen to me the average believer does not know which key to apply when faced with challenges so as to command victory so the typical believer the typical church goer will begin to engage all kinds of things blood of jesus holy ghost fire communion offering and just shadow box them here and there in hope that one will walk and truly one will walk and the danger is because it did not come by mastery you will fear your result because you are sure that you cannot reproduce it again but paul said he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he thrives lawfully there, there has to be a desperation and a passion in your heart. I'm hungry for you, hungry for you. I have come to the table to eat. I'm thirsty for you, thirsty for you. I have come to the waters to drink. Now tarry and not let you go. That's just the part I wanted to sing for you to hear. Like Jacob, Lord change my life. Not through superstition, but through exact exegesis of truth. Let me not move around just saying I am a Christian. No results or results once a year. Not bringing glory to the name of the Lord. No. And then not just succeeding in your spiritual life alone and Abraham was old and well stricken in age and God had blessed him in all things don't sit down and justify mediocrity because you are doing well spiritually no you must embrace the entire counsel of God 
there is only one thing that is greater than the truth the whole truth the whole truth are we blessed divine intervention Daniel chapter 3 let's study scripture Daniel chapter 3 Daniel chapter 3 my goodness God is changing someone's life Daniel 3 from verse 23 please very quickly Daniel 3 23 and these three Shadrach Meshach Abednego fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace follow carefully we're reading to 30 then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire follow carefully they answered and said unto the king true O king he answered and said lo I see four men lose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no heart and the form of the fourth is like the son of God Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said Shadrach Meshach Abednego ye servants of the most high God come forth and they come hither then Shadrach Meshach and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire uh-huh and the princes watch this governors captains kings counselors being gathered together saw this man upon whose bodies the fire had no power there are men like that men whose bodies the fire had no power nor was an air out of their head singed neither were their coats changed nor the smell of fire had passed upon them as a result 28 ne king nebuchadnezzar spake and said blessed be the god of shadrach i don't know his name but i know those who represent him i will name him by their victory blessed be the god of shadrach meshach and abednego who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and has changed the king's word a king's word can be changed though yes sir oh i vow you will not rise a king's word can be changed and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god 29 look at the victory that this brought to the name of the lord therefore i make a decree that every people nation language which speak anything amiss against the god of shadrach meshach and abednego they shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other god that can deliver after this sort and the king promoted shadrach Meshach, Abednego, Joshua Selman. Have you forgotten the Bible says this promise is unto you and your children, your children's children, as many as are far off whom the Lord shall call. What is divine intervention? Write very quickly, please. We have a lot to do tonight and we have to rush. Divine intervention is said to occur when God steps in by God here we mean the God of the Bible Almighty El Shaddai when God steps in over the affairs of men causing positive outcomes to happen and turning negative situations around divine intervention happens when God steps in over the affairs of men causing positive outcomes to happen and turning negative situations around ultimately bringing glory to the name of the lord ultimately bringing glory to the name of the lord don't forget to add that so when god steps in over the affairs of men causing positive outcomes to happen and turning negative situations around ultimately bringing glory to the name of the Lord 
Galatians 1 24 and they glorified God in me through the excellency of his wonder working power upon my life they glorified God in me John 15 verse 8 herein is our father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples there are times in our lives in our families where we will require divine intervention because the help of man we will get to a point where the help of man can fail the bible is not careful as to the limitation of the help of men and the frailty of the energy of the flesh it says for by the arm of flesh the bible declares no man can prevail are we together why do we need inter divine intervention because satan and his cohorts listen carefully satan and his cohorts are determined to thwart the purposes of god in the life of the saints the bible lets us know that there is a real devil john 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy look at it very carefully that means the thief has no business coming around a life until there is something to steal there is something to kill and there is something to destroy then the bible says i am come that ye may have life and that they may have it more abundantly satan is determined to see that the purposes of god over the life of the saints individually and then corporately as a body that God's divine purposes are thwarted and so he does that listen carefully he does that by introducing negative circumstances to our spiritual work and then our destiny work in general so you begin your work of faith and either through wrong decisions on your own part through ignorance and so on and so forth for many of you who have listened to my teaching on the mystery of deliverance, it's helped the body in no small way. I teach there that there are three principal channels. Listen carefully. There are three principal channels from scripture through which demons and Satan attack and buffet the saints. Number one, covenants. 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 The legal system of the kingdom. Number two, disobedience number three ignorance these are the only three ways from scripture anyone at all whoever faces any attack from satan anyone at all who becomes a victim of the assaults of satan one or more or all these channels were the doorways he used to access your life i repeat one covenants the strongest of them all two ignorance three disobedience hallelujah and so the devil will bring negative situations around our lives they can come through the ministry the negative ministry of men they can come by manipulating systems and structures look at Jesus Jesus came to the earth to become a portrait a pattern man to help men see and know God's intent. Number two, he came as perfect theology, correcting our ideas about God. Number three, he came to fulfill that role of a mediator through his substitutionary sacrifice to the end that men may be saved. From his birth, there was an attack. There needed to be a divine intervention. Are we together now? Yes. An innocent young virgin whose life was interrupted because a savior was about to be born. That was not enough. Because of Jesus, they killed his age mates. Two years and below. Women cried because the devil was looking for a destiny to destroy. The moment he announced that he was Messiah, people systems were orchestrated by the devil to fight him the religious leaders 
the political leaders, the government of the day came into unity to fight him to a point where they were willing to release an ambrobber, someone who was already confirmed to be a nuisance to society. Let Barabbas go, but let this one be killed. Satan's determination to kill Jesus was so high, God had to incorporate it in the strategy for victory. Satan will leave no stone unturned to see to it that my destiny and your destiny, if allowed, becomes shredded in pieces. Listen, just because you've given your heart to Jesus Christ and you are sincere and well-meaning does not mean the devil will leave you and say, I'm aware there's the mark of the blood on you. No, no. He left Jesus for a season. Came back through Peter. Came back through Judas. On the third day when Jesus was going to arise, they locked up the grave, sealed it, and there were men who were seated. And the Bible says the angel came with power, rolled the stone, and sat on it. Jesus resurrected, he left, and the men came together. They said, look, um, something is wrong. Let's come together. And re they received money and lied that the disciples came and stole his body. That's how determined Satan is to make sure that destinies never go forward. It is not strange and it did not start with you. Satan's antagonism towards us and our families did not start with us. It's, it's a vendetta that predates our coming. It's been an ancient war. Anything that brings glory to the name of Jesus, anything that advances the purposes of God is Satan's business, invited or not. So when they were dedicating you as they lifted you, like Jesus was lifted, it's not only members that came for that child dedication. The devil was also hearing. Let me hear what this priest will say about this. Oh Lord, this child called Joshua Selman, I lift him up before you. Let him be a blessing to the nations. And the devil said, what did you say? I had blessing. Now I'm interested. Not because of what else you said. That means there is something about kingdom come in his life. You become an intentional project. Listen carefully. Oh, why don't they like me? Who did I offend? All that statement is just a superstitious talk. The condition, listen, the qualification for an attack is that you are born. The moment you pass through the womb of a woman, you are qualified enough for an attack. Then, when he sees you giving your life to Jesus, I hope you know it. demons witness these things. Lord Jesus, I give you everything. And they are watching. And you are rolling on the ground, rolling in the house of God, and saying, my heart is yours, my life and my destiny. They know Satan was once in heaven. He knows the implication of genuine surrender. He knows you are making yourself usable. And he says, do you know what? Let's isolate this person and twat and rubbish the purposes of God in his life. And can I tell you, provided you are still wearing this mortal body, somewhere in the equation of your life, you will fall short of obedience. Somewhere in the equation of your life, through ignorance, there will be some level of access. Until you learn what you need to know, you will be a victim of the ignorance of it. So Satan will cash into that moment. This is why we need divine intervention. It was a system of advantage that was programmed by God's wisdom. So that if by any means, through ignorance, through wrong decisions, it is on the strength of mysteries like this, Paul can say we know that all things even something that should make you fail there is still a provision in the economy of god where you can be delivered someone shout amen, amen. yes sir so when you say you are a christian you are not saying you are a follower of a religion whose founder is jesus no you are saying you are one who by the privilege of god's grace one you have been made a partaker of the life of god justified are we together in Christ? Number two, you are saying you are one who through spiritual understanding, you have been surrounded with mysteries like chariots. These are the forces that help you to walk in victory experientially. 
these forces of the kingdom continue to cancel away every negative prophecy over your life let's see what that family will become they are right except that when you bring out one mystery one arsenal from that spiritual toolbox you can end something that was supposed to be so one of those mysteries in addition to the much you have received is called the mystery of divine intervention god did not leave us without his presence he did not leave us without his backing listen carefully there are three levels at which we encounter the power of god number one i need to say this before i begin to explain a few things number one the first level is a personal encounter where we meet god as a person an encounter that is the highest level you receive power from that level god directly number two there is a dimension of God's power that is programmed in principles. You don't need to know him. You don't need to believe him to experience that dimension of his power. The moment you are compliant to and with the principle, for instance, you can be an assassin or an armed robber and still sow during the rainy season and your crops will grow. It's the dimension of God's power that sponsors that growth. But it was programmed in principles. You don't need a relationship nor an encounter to enjoy that dimension of his power. This is a dimension that many unbelievers have tapped into. Business principles. They have built systems, structures. They have built a very civilized society based on those principles. Even though they may not honor the God that powers that principle. Are we together? So the first is a personal encounter with the God of the Bible. Second is obedience and compliance to principles. Principles work because at the back of them, there is an investment of a dimension of God's power. And then the third way we receive power in this kingdom is through covenant alignment with men and women. Covenant alignment with men and women who God has trusted with certain graces. Direct encounter with God compliance and obedience to principles then covenant alignment with men and women i just needed to chip that in so that you'll understand what i'm about to explain are we together the mystery of divine encounters it is on the strength of these truths you access the power of God and you begin to walk in such level of victory. One level and dimension of victory to the other. One level of victory. And you see, by this, your life shows in truth that the victory of Christ over sin, over death, over Satan was absolute and true. Creation is waiting for the richness of the manifestation of God's power and grace in and through your life to validate the reality of every claim that Jesus made in and through his finished work. That means I can become a poor representation of the victory of Christ through the plethora of defeats that my life command. My life can be so defeated, it does not look attractive to be a Christian. I can misrepresent the purposes of God so every time I contend for superior dimensions of these mysteries, it is to the end that we become empowered and then we become trophies, if you would use that expression. That men can look at our lives and say, no, it pays to subscribe to this government. Are we together? In business, we teach that the greatest way to market is to tell the truth. There's no fear when you are telling the truth. Is that true? When you package and you lie, you are afraid of the truth being discovered. So if we are marketing a God to our world, we are marketing Jesus Christ, and we are telling the world he's the way, he's the truth, and he's the life, they will say we may not be able to see him, but let's look at you who are seeing him, and let's look at what he has done to you. From the assessment of your victory, the quality of your life, it is safe for us to now conclude if this your Jesus is a better alternative to the charm that I've been using. If this your Jesus is a better alternative to this God I'm serving. 
Nobody lives better for good. Nobody lives best for better. So if we are selling a Jesus to our world and letting them know that he is savior, he is mighty, the ancient of days, we must be able to present him in a way and manner that dumbfounds principalities and powers. It is on this strength, the Bible says, Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10, to the intent, this is why he's blessed us so richly with all these mysteries, to the intent that now, unto principalities and powers in heavenly places, might be known by the church, his bride, his body, the manifold wisdom of God. Are we together? Yes. Distant shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. As can now give the nations to you, O oh Lord. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will see. Do you know why we teach this? We teach these truths. Number one, because God loves us and He wants us to experience the highest level of victory that our obedience can afford us in this side of God's kingdom and in this side of eternity. But number two, we do these things because there is a world that is watching and they are depending on the testimony of God's grace upon our lives for the decision that affects their eternal destiny. Are we together? Have you seen marketers of products? Look up, please. There are a few people here, some of you may be you know, company owners, and you have all kinds of products and services, and look the level of training that goes in to teach the marketers because you are about to defend the image and the interest of a company. You are marketing a product that probably expires after six months or after two years, and look the skill that goes in. Make sure you're well suited. Make sure your communication is, is very articulate. Make sure you smile whether you are tired or not. Look at all that skill. We employ the people, give them a salary, motivate them, and send them. And even when they see their classmates, or their loved ones, or their brothers on the street, they are not even they are so proud of what they are selling. And yet the validity is just six months. The validity is just two years. But we are selling something here that has the eternal destiny of men. Listen carefully. It is truly evil. To refuse your life from commanding certain levels of results because by doing it you are the the destiny of millions are depending on your results so if you truly love God don't just say I love God you must contend for superior levels of results let your light so shine before men I need to put this in perspective because many times when they hear preachers talk like this um, there is a spirit of religion that will usually want to fight people when they teach to empower people once it is not a talk about Jesus and a direct talk about holiness and righteousness respectfully speaking a lot of people frown at it and they feel you are wasting people's time no we teach the whole counsel of God. Everything together, they will weave themselves and add up to the revelation of the Christ and the glorification of the same. We have been marketing Jesus wrongly. That's why the world has been slapping that gospel back at our face. We need to reinvent our strategy. Come up with power. Come up with results. Nobody runs away from what works. Are we together? So I need to say this because there are many people who want to receive these truths. But the spirit of religion can loom around people's hearts and not let them to be equipped. And they go blindly with zeal that does not have knowledge. Oh, I want to serve Jesus. And they die like chickens because they are not equipped with the requisite level of spiritual knowledge that keeps them in victory. 
I believe in the whole counsel of God. Look the kind of bride that Jesus is coming for. Come and I will show you the lamb's wife. And he showed me a city equal in length, equal in breadth, equal in depth. No exaggeration. That is the lamb's wife. That is the bride that he's coming for. He's not coming for some lopsided bride. There is no bride who does not adorn herself very well on the wedding day. There is no bride who forgets her makeup, forgets her shoe, and just comes to stand. No matter how much you are in a hurry. If you want to present yourself as that bride, get serious about every aspect of your spiritual life. Get serious about every aspect of your destiny. If God tells you, I want to use your resources to glorify Jesus, then ensure that those resources are to the degree that can command kings. Can I tell you this? The arrogant world that we live in will depend on a high level of results for the kings of the land to hear you. Ordinary people can hear you no matter what you are saying. But our target is not just the people. We also need the kings because the kings have influence. Look what happened to Zacchaeus. One encounter with Jesus saved many people who he had defrauded. Are we blessed? These are principles of kingdom advance. We have a series on that. But for now, it's important for you to submit to embrace the whole counsel of God. There are demons, there are arsenals of darkness. Hear me, brothers and sisters. They are going to come and attempt to attack your life. But you need the truth of God's word. The Bible says, write this down. Psalm 11 from verse 9, the B part. Proverbs 11, I meant to say from verse 9, the B part. It says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Through knowledge. Submitting to spiritual knowledge is indicating your interest to truly be delivered and to walk in victory. So divine intervention is real. It's a spiritual arsenal that must be part of our equipping as believers is part of the forces that make us matured and help us thrive and reign in life. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season. It is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.